Story. Usopp woke up to two things, a killer headache, and the sound of someone screaming in pain. He rolled out of bed and shuffled out of the door, looking for the cause of the sound. Meanwhile, in the medical bay, Luffy writhed around on the bed, thrashing from side to side and screaming until his voice cut out. Chopper was attempting to clean his wound out, but he was struggling to open the stitches with his captain moving around so much. Luffy started a new round of screaming which turned into a coughing fit that brought even more blood out of his lungs and down his face. Chopper looked concerned. Flip him on his side, he yelled, trying to be heard over Luffy. The crew did as they were told. As soon as Luffy was flipped off the side of the bed he began vomiting pools and pools of blood onto the floor. Usopp, having just walked into the room, promptly fainted, although nobody paid him any attention. Poor Nami was shaking uncontrollably, tears streaming down her face in silence as she stroked her captain's inky black hair. After Luffy had drained the blood from his lungs, the crew followed Chopper's instructions, flipping the writhing boy back onto his back and holding him there while Chopper injected a stronger drug into his arm. After a few more minutes of desperate struggling, Luffy finally stopped moving, his face changing from one of immense pain to one that looked, thankfully, at peace. Once he was still, Chopper got to work opening Luffy's stitches up and examining the wound. Infected. He muttered, possible, yeah that's blood poisoning. The others, despite lacking medical expertise, could tell that what Chopper was describing was not good. Chopper cleaned the wound out and restitched it, before bandaging Luffy's torso and lying the captain back down. He pulled two more syringes out of his drawers and stuck one in Luffy's arm and the other in his neck. When he had done that, he stepped back and took a deep breath. The others, realizing they were done, made their excuses and left to get some air. Zoro scooped Usopp up again and wandered off with his lifeless body in its usual place slung over his shoulder. Chopper left as well, no longer able to stand being in the room when the floor and walls were spattered with Luffy's blood. Nami couldn't bring herself to move, and so stayed right where she was with her captain's head in her lap. Eventually she came out of shock and keeled over, sobbing. After a few minutes, she felt a warm hand on her face. She opened her eyes, only to be met by her captain's penetrating gaze. To her amazement, he was smiling. Luffy's entire body felt like it was on fire. He could tell that his wound had been numbed, at least for the time being, but his head was still killing him. As he came around, his ears began to ring. After about 30 seconds, his hearing began to develop. He was alone in the medical bay, no there was someone else. Were they, crying, he listened to the voice for a moment, and recognized it as Nami. The captain opened his eyes and was met by her sobbing navigator's pained face. The captain plastered a reassuring smile on his face and raised a hand to cup her face. She gasped and opened her eyes. So close, she was so close, Luffy slowly sat up, panting. His throat was raw, and he could tell he had caused quite a scene, especially when he noticed the blood spattered all over the room, and the pools of it on the floor. He turned to Nami, I take it that's mine. He rasped, his voice weak and raw. Nami's eyes filled with a fresh batch of tears as she nodded. Luffy braced himself against the wall and stretched his arms out, wrapping them around Nami. The girl let out a small gasp as she was pulled towards her captain. He flicked her up and pulled her into his lap, only now noticing how much she was shaking. I'm all right, he assured her, before adding, where's Sanji at, I'm hungry. This, despite everything, made Nami laugh. Promoted stories, you'll also like. Isaac the Sky Boy, 2.8K79. Open hollow lens bracket roar no Zoro X self insert OC, one piece Netflix adaptation, close hollow lens bracket, an alternate version of Enquad, the Isakod Pirate Enquad, based on the one piece live action. Let
Let me help you. A Luffy x Nami fanfic. 209k 2.5k. After Luffy's battle with Doflamingo at Dressrosa, Luffy is now once again reunited with Sabo. Reuniting with Sabo somehow made Luffy remember about Ace and had a Ryok. Broken Hearts Doflamingo x Reader. 4.4k 325. A woman who has had several adventures with her crew has recently encountered an island that would bring her and her crew into ultimate doom. Losing her captain and her. One Piece. The heart and soul of Monkey D. L. 74938. This story follows Luffy after a fateful encounter with a seemingly ordinary 18-year-old girl named Arya. Tragic circumstances lead to Arya joining Luffy's ragtag pirate. I need you more, Luffy x Nami. 20.1k296. In the wake of their new victory in Wano, time spilled into the hands of Luffy and Nami. Recognition of their silent feelings wailed in their hearts like aches, Kraken. The Rising Moon. One Piece. 1.7k178. Two years had passed since the War of the Best, along with the straw hat being sent flying from Sabayati Archipelago due to the former warlord, Kuma. With the two years p. Unexpected love. 1010. Monkey D. Luna is no ordinary girl. She was born different. She can manipulate plants' life. She is the twin sister of Monkey D. Luffy. Like her brother, she wants to be. Hearing Nami's laugh was enough to set Luffy off as well, despite him having no idea what they were laughing about. The both of them laughed until it hurt, although it hurt Luffy the entire time, eventually fading into a comfortable silence. After a while, Luffy drifted back to sleep, shortly followed by the smaller girl he was still cradling in his lap. Chopper entered the room a moment later carrying a large tray of food. The smell of the delicious meal was enough to wake Luffy up, and he almost threw Nami off his lap in his haste to get up. He stopped himself at the last minute and laid her down on the bed, which he then noticed was covered in his blood. Chopper was looking up at him with a mix of shock and concern engraved into his face. You shouldn't wake up for another few hours, he commented, setting the food down on the table beside the bed. How long have you been up? Luffy just shrugged and started wolfing down the meal that Chopper had laid out for him. The small reindeer sighed and shuffled off, saying something about getting Sanji to cook some more. Luffy, uncharacteristically, remade the bed, getting rid of the blood-soaked sheets, before placing his sleeping navigator back onto it and climbing in beside her, falling asleep almost instantly. Roronoa Zoro sat with his back to the rest of the ship, admiring the ocean. Around the rest of the ship, he knew Sanji was cooking and Usopp was recovering from the horrific scene he had stumbled across earlier in the evening. He had watched Chopper come stumbling out of the medical bay with a handful of dishes and knew that his captain was awake, which meant he was alive. Zoro sighed, pulling himself off his perch to go and help clean out the medical bay. He opened the door and was met by an odd sight. The bedding had been changed, leaving the bed as one of the only things in the room that was not covered by his captain's blood. Not only this, but also the fact that there were two occupants in the bed. He recognized one of them instantly as his captain, but the other was hidden, tucked under the covers and pressed against his captain. Zoro had a pretty good idea who it might be Nami. He chuckled to himself and got to work using the sheets that Luffy, he assumed, had pulled off the bed to mop the pools of blood off the floor. Then he got to work scrubbing away at the rest of the floor and the walls, trying to scrub the blood stains out of it Chopper reappeared with more plates of food and took in the scene in the same way as Zoro had before helping the swordsman with the room. That evening, the entire crew gathered for dinner. First in the kitchen, other than Sanji, was Zoro, who looked tired. Then came Usopp who promptly asked about why the hell he walked in on his captain vomiting gallons of blood onto the ground. Chopper walked in in time to help explain that to the sniper. Finally, Nami and Luffy appeared in the doorway. 
Nami was acting as a brace for the captain who was still pale and weak from blood loss. The two of them shuffled into the room. Zoro stood up to help get Luffy into his seat. Usopp was looking at his captain with concerns evident on his expression. Sanji served the food and the crew sat around in silence. After a while, Nami cleared her throat, turning the group's attention to her. Um, I didn't know when to tell you guys this, but we're approaching some kind of island. I'm fairly sure it's Trop. She was cut off as her stupid captain let out a loud whoop and rocketed out of his seat. Nami shot up to catch him as he swayed and fell, muttering something about him being an idiot. She sat him back down and continued with her explanation. The crew helped out with the pack up and all headed out to the deck to get a glance at the island. Soon enough, it appeared on the horizon. Just as Nami had thought, it was tropical. She sat there, staring at the fast approaching island. The deck was engulfed by a comfortable silence. Nami felt a familiar weight fall onto her lap and looked down to find her sleeping captain curled up there, his head resting on her lap. Once again she found herself staring at him rather than the island in the distance. The rest of the crew slowly drifted off to bed, leaving her on the deck with her captain. She lifted a hand and began tracing lines down his sleeping face. All of a sudden, his eyes were wide open. Nami panicked, hurriedly pulling her hand away and turning to hide her blush. He chuckled and sat up, pulling her into a hug. Nami buried her head in his chest, desperate to hide her bright red face. He rubbed her back carelessly. Nami couldn't help but wonder if he had any idea of the damage he was doing to her. He was too innocent to know the true effect of his touch. Before long, she was asleep. Luffy picked his sleeping navigator up, wincing at the pain the effort caused. Slowly, he shuffled off to her room and placed her gently in the bed, pausing to catch his breath. As he stared down at his navigator, Luffy realized how much he really did love her. He knew the others would never expect him to understand the concept, but it made a ton of sense to him. Animals were capable of love. Of course he was as well. He sighed and tucked a strand of hair behind Nami's ears, turning to leave. He knew Chopper wanted him in the medical room, but he climbed into his bunk anyway, not wanting to be left alone. From the hammock beside him, Zoro watched his captain with an amused grin. 